Good morning, everyone. I'm at the Palm Beach Synagogue's Glow Out of Egypt experience that the children are going to have in literally an hour and a half, where they're going to experience the exodus from Egypt through glows, glowing in the dark experiences. And I think this is a great metaphor for the story of Passover. The message of Passover is that even when there's darkness, we have to find the inner glow, the inner light of our soul. And that inner light that we all possess is what will lead us to our personal and collective redemption. At the night of Passover, we have four children at the Seder. And when you look at the order, the first one is the wise child and the second one is the wicked child. The third one is the one who cannot speak. He's simple, a simple child. And then there's the child who cannot ask a question. And the question is, why is the wicked child right after the wise child? And the answer is that when you have the seating arrangements for the Passover Seder, seat the wicked child or the rebellious child or the depressed child or the confused or the apathetic or the ignorant child next to the wise child. So the wise child can inspire and awaken the inner goodness of the wicked child. Because the truth is this. The truth is there's no such thing as a truly wicked person. Everyone has inner goodness. And therefore you should see that inner goodness and awaken it from within. Bring out the glow, the inner light within the darkness. It says in Pirkei Avot, judge every person favorably. And the question is, what does it mean judge every person favorably? First of all, sometimes there's no real favorable judgment to say about something that someone did. It's very clearly wrong. Second of all, why doesn't it just say, don't judge anyone? Why say judge them, but judge them favorably? And Lubavitcher Rebbe, whose birthday it is today, he was born in 1902, and today marks the day of his birth, is, interprets it as follows. He says what the teaching is saying is, don't just not judge, which is what people often say, don't be judgmental, don't judge, but judge them and judge them favorably. What does that mean? It says in the Talmud that God does not give a person a challenge that they cannot overcome. And therefore, if this person has this struggle or this challenge, that means they also have the inner goodness and potential to overcome it. And therefore, when you see someone who may be wicked externally, see beyond their external wickedness and say, if they have all these external struggles and weaknesses and challenges in their life, and you see they're failing, that means they have the inner strength to overcome all of these challenges. And therefore judge them for who they really are and see their inner goodness and see their potential and therefore you will draw that out and help them overcome whatever it is that is failing and struggling in their life. And therefore the wise child should be specifically placed next to the wicked child. Today on the birthday of the Rebbe, this was the Rebbe's overriding message. The Rebbe often said that the four children at least show up at the Seder, but there's a fifth child who doesn't even attend the Seder. And it's our responsibility to find that fifth child and bring them to the Passover Seder so that every Jew should experience the story of the freedom of Egypt, the, the story of their ancestors, and realize that it's not just a historical story, but it's a story of every one of us in our own lives finding our own inner light to produce our own path towards our own redemption and our own freedom. There's a rabbi in Israel, his name is Rabbi Eliezer Saratskin. He runs an organization called Lev Lachim, which is an outreach organization to fellow Jews and inspires thousands and thousands of people with his work. But he has a son whose name is Yassi, who when he was born, he was born with a spinal condition called Bona uh, Bifida, which is a terrible condition which causes paralysis and handicap uh, where a child is unable to walk properly because of a curvature in the spine. And thank God, through years of rehabilitation, this son is now a young man married with children and walks with braces, but beautifully. And he tells a story that when he was once walking home from synagogue with his son, his son was learning how to walk and he had braces and he was holding his hand and he let go of his son's hand and started to walk ahead of his son. And there was a woman on the street who saw the rabbi leave his son in that condition and started to yell at him and said, at the Lomit Bayesh, you're not ashamed to leave your child behind and in his condition and walk ahead of him? 
And he said he had such pressure to turn around and help his son because this woman was screaming at him saying you should be ashamed of yourself. But he said the reason I walked ahead was because I knew that if I don't challenge my son to keep up with me, to learn how to walk on his own, he will remain a cripple for the rest of his life. And so I deliberately forced myself to walk ahead of him, although I wanted to walk alongside him, to challenge him to step up, so to speak, and to be able to rise to the challenge and learn how to walk on his own accord. And I think this is a beautiful story, not just about how to not be judgmental about other people's motives, but it's also a story of believing in other people's potentials. Sometimes we see someone has a challenge or a struggle or a weakness. We could either, we could either look down on them or we could say, no, let me see their potential to overcome it. And if you judge them in that manner, judge them favorably by seeing their inner goodness and potential, then you will transform them that they will no longer be the wicked, rebellious, angry, bitter, resentful, unhappy child, but they will turn into that wise, kind, benevolent, loving, God-fearing, good-natured child. Judge people, but see the good and judge them positively. That was the message of the Rebbe that we should all be inspired to live our lives by. Have a happy Pesach.